Hey everybody, this is Carl back again for another TV show spoiler review. And today is a recommended one, uh, an anime that wasn't even, didn't even know it was like a thing, uh, named Goblin Slayer. You know, in January they announced there will be a season two, but I went through uh, season one, wrapped up a few days ago, and honestly, I I was blown away. I would have ranked, I, I don't rank it in my top 10 favorite animes that I've enjoyed, but I still, I still enjoyed it regardless, honestly. But man, this is like, when I, when the pilot started, I'm thinking like, cause it's very like RPG type of thing, where it's like, there's this girl named Priestess, clearly like the white mage of a particular group. And this is like a whole guild situation where people, you know, warriors and mages and so on can come in and take on bounties to take out certain threats. At first, I'm thinking like, oh, wow, this is kind of like, you know, the anime fairy tale. One of my personal favorites. I really enjoy fairy tale. And because that is in my top 10. But then like food wars before it it can get darn near hentai uh because there's some boop effects and you know grape you know situations because you introduce cause let me go through like the characters here like we got of course goblin slayer the main character who honestly if you watch this and and the actor's performance this is like very close to the mandalorian if you watch the way this character is portrayed it is very dinjarin even down to the fact that you, you, know, you don't know who he is but that's the only difference is we eventually see dinjarin's face we never see what god was saying actually look like and i kind of like that but he's like the main character he, you know, as the name suggests, he only kills goblins. Uh, that's his only, you know, focus. Uh, you got the, uh, his partner, uh, who will be his partner named Priestess, kind of like the white mage of the group. And we start following her, you know, in this pilot. Then we get, uh, we got this, uh, a female named Cowgirl who grew up with Goblin Slayer, you know, uh, and you're talking about like the boob effects. This girl, because he stays with her and her uncle after, you know, you find out about a tragedy that his, uh, f you know, family was uh, uh, murdered by a bunch of goblins, and that's why he got, you know, such a rage and thirst to just kill goblins and uh and just like with like mandalorian and like kratos from god of war goblin slayer is like a man of few words and it's kind of like just a very matter of fact kind of attitude which i kind of enjoy because he's like the straight man to everybody's wackiness uh, uh so it's like one character is like you know you could have just said that I thought I just did. Uh, uh, it is very funny. Uh, but yeah, cowgirl who, you know, at one moment when she's, you know, wishing Goblin Slayer a good morning as he's outside, you know, observing like the outer perimeter and make sure there's no, uh, you know, goblin kind of threats because he's like a, a huge expert in goblins and how they operate and work and you know you know who to attack first in the because it's like goblin hierarchies it's, it's the low rank goblins there's goblin mages and, and like goblin lords and, and how to deal with them in a particular way uh uh you know, cowgirl just like leans out her wind bedroom window to wish him a good morning, and the boob face is, is just like, just like leans out like the on the ledge. It's like, okay, it seems like the you know animators and the writers of 
animes in the past handful of years seems like kind of people in my generation and gen z people because like back in the day when i growing up you know anime is a little, little bit more subtle than that and food wars was the one that kind of really kind of tipped it off for me because like okay you're just borderline hentai at this point and it's like you gotta be a little more subtle than that if you're in on the joke it's less fun you know what i mean but then you got uh guild girl it's like this three potential love interest for goblin slayer but guild girl who works inside the guild who uh sets up like the bounties for people to come in and register or set people up who was uh out uh to want to earn a living and you know stomping monsters and just like in fairy tale in their guild there's you know, ranks and, and like you know uh you know like the highest rank like gold or something like that As a matter of fact because because i'll put up here because the the ranking system is a little bit like backwards to me Uh, uh, okay, here you go, ranks. Uh, yeah, rank 10 porcelain, which was the priestess. Uh, you got rank nine obsidian steel eight sapphire seven emerald six ruby five bronze four silver three gold two and platinum is rank one because i thought it was the other way around probably misheard uh 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 like gold ranked adventures mainly work for national government and platinum ranks are rare because only a few people in history have attained this rank there's only been 10 adventurers known to have reached this rank. Uh, uh, the more recent one is actually named Hero, this female. I ain't trying to spoil myself here a bit, but... Uh, uh, Goblin Slayer and his... Uh, all except for Priestess, uh, uh, certain allies we see in here... It's kind of like, you know, paladins in a way are silver ranked. Uh, we also get like high archer elf, dwarf shaman, lizard priest who uh, comes along with uh, uh, priestess and goblin slayer on their little quest. Uh, uh, we also get like, you know, we see like this guy named Heavy Warrior. They know actually specific names for these people. It's very generic. I try to look deep down uh, just to make sure like I'm not missing something. But no, they just got very generic names. You got Spearman, who is, you know, a civil rank guy. And, you know, he seems like the kind of guy that talks like big game, but he actually can't back it up. Uh, and you got Witch, who's like the mage of the group. And she talks super seductively like those kind of like uh sex hotlines in a way uh but anyway uh uh we introduced into this world in the pilot where priestess is you know uh signing up to be the you know uh, legally an adventurer and she started off at porcelain and these uh other three rookies who very cocky attitudes all coming in like hey uh, you know you're new here oh we need a white mage hey why don't you uh come along to us we're going to be stopping some like you know goblins in, in this uh uh particular cave and and guild girls trying to you know warn them like whoa like 
that seems like you know probably like a, a silver rank kind of thing uh you know at, at the most it's like uh what's the one below it uh uh you know you know like bronze at the you know uh uh at the very least you guys you know haven't gotten that far yet and of course one of us like oh it's like don't worry we got this and of course they don't got this and this is where it gets very kind of like you think of course i don't think anybody can discount the fact that the pilot of attack on titans probably uh, super gory but this is probably like you know second to the goriest thing i've seen in an anime where because there's only one guy who's like the swordsman and uh and there's three other females in this group one of them being the priestess the white mage and then you got like this other female who's like the fighter and uh this other one who's kind of supposed to be like the mage and they all are ignoring kind of like the clear warning signs and fall for like obvious kind of traps not like pitfalls or anything like that but it's just like ignoring clearly stuff that goblin say you see later point out that you completely overlooked uh you know, super super rookie mistakes uh uh which you'll think like if you sign up to be a you know adventure which guild girl you know towards the end of the season kind of like set up some kind of you know thing which you, you would think would part been like one-on-one kind of uh situation for this type of uh job where high-ranking uh adventurers who've probably retired can train the porcelain lo lower rank adventurers so that way there's less casualties when they go out on their own for adventures and they should probably be a mandatory thing to stick with something kind of like naruto it's like there's ranks for a reason they rank missions for a reason because you don't want to get like a b rank mission to a genin because obviously they don't have the power necessary to deal with something that is intrinsically a, a difficult task given the fact that you might run into dangers that you know you don't have the power set or skill set or fine-tuned skill set to properly maneuver uh you know naruto sasuke and sakura's first adventure is clear indication of why that is set up for a reason because they barely made it out of that situation alive uh and that's only because the guy who commissioned that uh, uh mission lied about the severity of uh, uh of the uh, threat they potentially are imposing because all oh, because he couldn't afford a higher rank you know uh warriors to get involved uh so these goblins you know not only trapped them but butchered the uh the guy because he carrying a sword you learn from goblin slayer that like he carrying like a sword way too big for an enclosed space like a cave where he can't he doesn't have like the reach in order to deal death blows and he gets mauled to death uh and so is, uh the uh the you know, the uh mage girl uh she gets like poisoned by one of the goblin's arrows and like left incapacitated and like and these things are starting like stabbing at her and she's barely like you know alive but couldn't do nothing with her but goblin gave her like a merciful death and uh the only other besides priestess the only other uh member alive was the fighter when she was nearly raped or great i'm sorry but uh can't say the r word on youtube and, and things like that but uh it was intense and according to goblin slayer like you know goblins tend to uh uh kidnap women rape them in their lair to birth more goblins and then kill and possibly eat them afterwards when they're done 
and leaves uh, uh you know most people who might be survive might survive super traumatized uh so goblin Slayer shows up and he kills all the goblins you know very efficiently and all the while you're learning how like he you know deals with things like you know carrying like a sword or sh- uh, sword because goblin lairs are typically like this where it's very hidden dark cavernous places where longer swords is ineffective uh, and kill goblins anywhere you can uh uh and but if you see like a goblin priest kill them first because they're usually like the leaders outside of maybe hobgoblins who or hobgoblins are more like uh these big brutes but there's goblin lords who uh you rarely see but if they're there you gotta handle them in a particular way uh but then of course he also despite the priestess you know kind of protest you know goblin slayer even kills like the baby children uh goblins and he points out you know goblins are not bright but you know once they see something they eventually learn and they have long memories and they will tend to eventually regroup and years later come back and try to you know find you so or cause even more devastation uh down the line so we need to nip in the bud right here now and you don't see it but he clearly you know is bashing using his club to bash these like goblin you know uh children to death and that's wow and that is freaking intense and you would think like he probably like a, a goblin underneath that armor but he's not he's actually human but i'm so glad towards like the final episode some guy because you know you know uh you know uh goblin said removes his helmet in front of uh you know priestess because she really want uh to see what he looked like and he's like oh, okay that's fine and like everybody in the in the adventures hall sees him like oh man and some dude in the background is like oh man i thought he might be a goblin underneath that and it's like i don't think anybody would have th- thought that the way he like you know he the way he hates goblins but no he's actually is human uh but um anyway uh you know you hear like you know most of the narrations come from priestess and she points out that you know you know some missions you know you know depending how the severity like in this situation leaves like uh some people so traumatized most of them like girls mostly goes to convents and you know you know you know just some kind of level of order and sanity in their lives is to you know get over like because this is a very traumatic kind of job it's very like i want to say i i guess i can say it's like r-rated version of fairy tale if the, you want to push fairy tales just a little further you have goblin slayer but eventually you know uh uh after a day uh of, of recuperation priestess comes back and it's like you know with more fire in her belly just to use like a language of uh natsu and wants to partner up with goblin slayer and goblin slayer is like fine it's like he, he's like he's just like he's very laser focused like you know he's not like mean spirited he's just like very very matter of fact kind of guy and it's like you do what you want i don't care uh so uh eventually you will meet up with like uh 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 uh, 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 uh hi God, crap what's that freaking like high elf uh high elf dwarf shaman and lizard priest uh uh who wants uh goblin slayer for a particular mission uh you know because they're emissaries from their own uh uh respective clans and there's like a bigger threat and they've 
uh that it needs to help stomp out and they figured like oh we can recruit goblin slayer and uh i'm, I'm blanking on like what the situation was because you know they help out goblin slayer deal with like a, a goblin problem uh uh in this castle because there was a whole another situation like it was like a whole entire different anime altogether and we we're just focused on the side mission the whole entire time but there's this big demon type of situation that's like world supposedly world ending or something or other and that doesn't circle back into like the you know the tail end of the final episode but um uh, goblin slayers no, have no interest in any other missions dealing with any other monsters but goblins and, and he gets made fun of for that uh, but he doesn't really care it's kind of like it's like a mix between Kratos and uh, the Mandalorian to me you put those two together you, you, pretty much goblin slayer to a T because you imagine these three in like a room together barely a word said between each other they just sit there drink tea coffee whatever and just like yeah uh, 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 sure it's just one words or grunts and it's like and they're probably the best of friends <laughs> uh but they go to this castle uh uh there's like this goblin warrior there and uh and uh i'm pretty sure it was a castle it was some kind of uh lair and they find that uh one of the uh uh high elves uh uh one of her people is chained up and everything like that and 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 is uh still alive but you know clearly weary and it was probably about to be used to birth more like you know goblins so Thanks to like Lizard Priest making these kind of bone skeleton thing because he's kind of like a very reptilian kind of uh, uh, power set. It's like power of the Stegosaurus or, you know, you know, like, you know, you know, uh, you know, just beseeching like different types of lizard like or reptilian like kind of entities to bestow him great power. So he gets this bone dinosaur skeleton thing to carry the high elf to uh the any nearest uh other high elf uh uh person to uh look after uh to la look after her and this kind of really puts uh it, it really puts um like uh the high elf uh archer in like a particular mood like these bastards man they you know you know they they you know they clearly hurt her and i you know it's just like you know could you see like in other anime you, with goblins in they play like you know these kind of low level low level grunts that you can just pick them off they're not like a any typical threat to any warrior worth their assault but here you see like you know you know looks can be deceiving you can't ignore these kind of things because uh they're relatively organized because they can you know set up like traps at one moment they actually use people as human shields towards the tail, tail of the uh show uh and they eventually build a boat and goblin said points out like, well they can easily be taught so if they see a boat they eventually will learn how to build a boat of their own uh uh and you know of course like the uh you know dwarf shaman he's like you know our people is like enemies to these things so like i feel your pain high elf and uh they all work together and they stop this like big goblin warrior and like you see him take like a you know bite into like the priestess arm when she she's wavering and it kind of weakens her powers uh and it's like, oh my god, I thought this was all in her head. Things get like very serious and turned up to like the 11th. 
So, um, and Goblin Slayer, you think like, oh, he got some kind of hidden power set or something like that he can unleash every once in a while. But no, he's just like a warrior and he keeps like few magic scrolls on him for certain occasions. He doesn't often use it, only for like, you know, you know, last ditch effort or just in case break glass kind of situation. In one moment, he released one scroll that like a transporting scroll that is linked to like the ocean the depth deep depths of the ocean and once released it comes out at, like a very high speeds because the p water pressure in the depths of the ocean and it cuts this like you know this giant goblin warrior to bits uh uh it, it's very intense but very cool at the same time and the the animation is fantastic especially when like and God would say, I guess that red eye glowing, and, and it's almost looked like uh, what's that Pokemon that eventually the low level Pokemon that eventually evolves into uh, uh, Dust Clops. It, it's almost like the Dust Clops, you know, Pokemon evolution line where they're a single eye kind of thing. It's almost remind me of that, uh, but it's just clearly like. An aesthetic just to see like oh he's getting really serious like that bloodthirsty moment um like he, he has that kind of wolverine you know berserker rage going when like he's in like goblin kill mode uh um there's another adventure they go on uh where they help this warrior priest it's, you know that priestess looks up to because she's kind of like the one that you know, stop like this huge threat long time ago that saved the world and she's blind and all because of the whole situation with a goblin uh, that you know puts like a torch to her face and you know end up blinding her very intense uh uh she you know sets up you know goblin saying his you know his friends to go underneath this massive, you know, citadel of a city that's like, you know, kind of like, uh, almost think of like Celadon City in Pokemon. It's kind of like very big place. And underneath all that with like these canals, like kind of like Venice in a way, these little canals underneath uh, this like old world kind of situation that, you know, warrior priestess gives this, uh, uh sword priestess gives uh the goblin sale of like old blueprints of the underground network and he find all these you know goblins and this giant lizard creature uh like alligator in a sewer kind of situation that eats them all up once they stop the threat they realize oh the goblin slayer realized oh the priestess you know knew about this already didn't evacuate it was something where you know you clearly she's kind of like a little messed up in the head from her you know from trauma you know from like nearly being like you know you know well not nearly she definitely was tortured but like didn't get uh killed by these goblin things but i i, I forgot the details but it's essentially kind of set up goblin slayer to deal with her problem because like uh i guess because maybe that she didn't want to cause a mass panic but also uh the people that she works for or with wouldn't because this like this again it's kind of like in the background it's kind of like a more massive threat that we never really see or you know uh hear more about until like the uh, last episode that you know the major armies of the citadels kind of put more you know fo uh, focus into that the bulk of their forces into that so uh she ends up hiring uh the expertise of goblin slayer um and of course she's like begs for his forgiveness and uh, his understanding and things like that uh because it's like uh, like oh I, I assume you won't want to kill me for this and he's like why are you a goblin no then i have no reason to kill you it was like it's like he's so laser focused on only his you know people who you know gets his ire is only goblins and it's like uh 
it's like you know they point out every time it's like you know uh it's like hey we got like a venture like you know for you uh goblins there is there goblins involved no oh well see ya it's 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 just like you really gotta really elaborate for, uh, for him because just to because it's very hard to get his interest involved into any other mission that you know doesn't involve goblins is you know that's you know like if you laugh at anything that is probably like the most you probably laugh at the how like none plus he is about anything that has nothing to do with goblins um uh of course you get this episode where he you know learns where he uh has a the training he gets from how to deal with goblins i kind of wish they kind of elaborate a little bit more with that you only get like a few minutes with it um you'll think that the whole episode will be dedicated to that so you'll see where he learned this uh you know the skills to deal with goblins so thoroughly but um uh towards the tail end of the uh series um goblin saying realized his homestead is being stalked by goblins because the perimeter is ne not necessarily breached because you wouldn't notice on first glance but given his training he sees the like, certain notches or you know grass is disturbed in a particular way that only goblins do because they send out goblin scouts every once in a while and leave particular trails and so now he's like given the investigation it's like oh my god there's probably like uh, uh at the very least a hundred goblins is you know probably going to be making his way over here and like he's like uh he, he's a little like um what's the word uh disencouraged or at least you know this something uh he's like you know uh his confidence is wavering a bit because like you know he do ideally deal with goblins in like a very localized area like a cavernous area so he can like pick them off you know a little easier but when they're out in the open in like a swarm very difficult and so and since his homestead he doesn't want cowgirl or uncle or anybody else in his village to get hurt because they're not warriors and he doesn't have time to you know just train them to fight back and he has at least he surmised like a couple of days because goblins typically attack at night because during the daytime they usually sleep uh because sunset for them is like sunrise for us uh uh so he goes back to a ventures guild and he's announced making a huge announcement in the guild hall it's like i need all y'all's help and everybody dismisses him at first because like except his friends it's like oh my god let me guess it's like a you know you know it's goblins yeah and everybody starts groaning oh my god goblins again goblins goblins, goblins. and he you know ex elaborates like there's at least a hundred goblins making my way to my home and i don't I, i'm not skilled enough to deal with that many out in the open and, and like I, I need help and at first there's some uh idiot who you know points i was like you know if you want to make a request put it on the wall and and um gill girl god bless her man she you know uh puts up an announcement like uh there's a new post uh anybody every uh, one goblin there's like a coin gold coin per goblin that if anybody kills uh like you know you know uh how i phrase it like one gold per goblin uh f for anybody who you know, takes out one and of course there's other people who's a little more closer to uh goblin says like you know making like you know because goblin said like i'll like i can't give you my life because i already promised that to uh, somebody to stay alive which is cowgirl so but i'll give you you know the clothes off my back anything in my possession like whatever you want like i just need your help like i don't care about anything else i just need that home standing and the people in people there alive so 
uh, he started making like you know bargaining, like you know some guys like you know you know uh, I want you to buy me a you know as much as I can drink here, uh, like done. I was like, and, and like you hear like Archer, high Archer, uh, high elf Archer is like, I want you to go on a, like a, a any. I want you to go on a normal adventure with me, no matter what it is. I want you to go. I was like, done. Uh, uh, and it's like, you know, a uh, uh, lizard shaman who, you know, fell in love with like, you know, just dairy in general, like cheese and ice cream. It's like, I want you to, like, you know, I want like your finest cheese and ice cream. It's like, you can have as much as you want in my home because, you know, that's where a lot of the dairy comes from. And, and it's, all things like that and everybody starts standing up like you know like oh captain my captain and like they all like you know under the guise of getting well at least most of them under the guise of getting something in return they by and large they all want to uh step up and help goblin slayer uh so they spent the day planning and like you know thanks to goblin slayer's like uh knowledge is like they're gonna use people as uh, human shields. We're gonna deal with that first. We're gonna use the mages to like lull them to sleep, so we can get those humans out of the line of fire. You know, they'll try to ambush us with like goblins, hot, you know, uh, riding wolves. So be ready with like, you know, like you know, spear spikes. You know, like you know, like, like these ground spikes things to like block them and everything like that so they are taking them each out so efficiently even like the down from like the lowest rank people to like these you know silver ranks they all like are pitching in and taking uh out these goblins and the hobgoblins while goblin slayer and priestess deal with the goblin lord who's organizing this and of course through the because these goblins don't speak but you hear the goblin lord speak but only when you're watching things through his POV, uh, but through everybody else, he's you know just grunts and growls just like any other goblin. So, uh, thanks to Priestess and learn from Goblin Slayer not to fall for any of the goblin's tricks when he's like, I will you know leave, you'll never see me again, and know like what happened with his her her old uh, party members in the first episode. It's like yeah, nice try. And like use her like you know, you know light wall shield thing to like encage, like squeeze him like flat in between, so that way Goblin Slayer can deal like a death blow. Like it's probably one of my favorite episode, honestly. But this you know, and it all ends with them having like a massive party, uh, uh in the Avengers Hall, and Goblin Slayer takes his, you know you know because. Priestess points out, like, like, I have a request. I helped you out. I get to have whatever I want from you. And it's like, okay, deal's a deal. What do you want? Like, I want you to take off your helmet. I want to see what you look like underneath there. I'm like, all right. So he takes off his helmet, and everybody just all gawking. Like, oh, my God. God was like, took off his helmet. And everybody just up in his face. And I'm so glad you don't actually see his face. I do not want that mystique ruined for me. It's kind of like, you know, Doom Guy or... Uh, from the Doom games or Master Chief in the uh, in um, the Halo games, or even the Mandalorian, and or Judge Dredd is like you know it, those guys are like the prime example of like I know a few of them did remove their helmets, uh, but uh, like the Mandalorian you actually see his face, uh, but part of the fun is like the mystique. And there's certain characters you don't want to see that face and you don't want to ruin that because the Halo TV series tried to ruin that for me because I tried to get on board with that for a little bit but towards the end of the pilot when he, he tried to remove the helmet I cut that stuff right off because it was free on YouTube for a little while just to see if like w would I buy Paramount Plus to, or was it Apple or Paramount I forget which I don't have either one but like what like let's see if I go you know you know you know, this gets me into watching the show because clearly they're trying to do the Mandalorian thing. But as soon as he's about to take off his helmet towards the end of the pilot, I was like, uh, uh I shut it off immediately. I was like, I do not want that ruined for me. Like, unlike the Mandalorian, because he's like a relatively new character at the time, uh, so there's no kind of like, uh, uh, you know, uh, precedent for him to uh, keep his helmet on. 
uh, for the bulk of the three seasons that we see him, he kept his helmet on until like maybe at the tail end of the each season, usually the last episode. But uh, uh, but somebody like everybody else that I listed do not want their that mystique ruined. So I'm glad that Goblin Slayer, you only get like up to the point of his mouth so you can see him smile. But that's where it cuts off. So I'm glad they just left it there. And, you know, you know and that's how the season ends. So I, you know, I'm probably waiting until, I'm not sure where Goblin Slayer is going to air. They only announced the second season uh, in January this year. So maybe by the... I don't know towards the end of this year maybe the first episode will air don't know where maybe tsunami i'm not sure uh but yeah i'll definitely you know this piqued my interest i'll probably like definitely check out season two see how that shapes out but yeah that was goblin slayer um and let me know what you guys think if you've seen goblin slayer before let me know what you guys think uh you know uh you know uh did they go too far with the R-rated stuff? Or they could have gone further? I'm curious. Um, but anyway, I will see you all uh, tomorrow for more video game walkthroughs of FF16 and uh, Street Fighter 6. But uh, anyway, have a good night. Take care. And um, they'll be back to I'll be back to more like X-Men TV shows and comic books, you know, in the following week. And the X-Men movies, I will be wrapped them up because I'm halfway done with all the X-Men movies. I'll get back into those uh, next month because I'm going to wrap up two more movies for the 4th of July movie review month uh, next week with Forrest Gump and G.I. Jane. So uh, look forward to those. And um, yeah, I'll see you all soon. Have a great weekend and happy Thursday. And uh, follow me on the links in the description below, by the way. Of course, I didn't mention that earlier. Uh, uh, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Talking of Carl. Uh, hit the notification bell so you'll know whenever I post new material. Uh, just, you know, posted some new stuff earlier today. New chaotic lore videos and new video game walkthroughs of FF16 and, and uh, Street Fighter Six, And um, yeah. Uh, follow me in the links in the description below patreon twitch instagram twitter and um yeah i will see you all soon oh and the hot ones challenge video i will begin around today i might have to uh, move that a little further but definitely at the very latest the first week of august i will have that you know you know you know the video for that set up to celebrate you know doing like a hot ones challenge video so i will get that you know uh out there soon so please bear with me um but anyway i'll see y'all soon take care